yeah, this is this is a this is a totally different kind of video. So hey, you've heard me talk in various places about my Nebula series, Mysteries of the Human Body. Uh, the episode five just dropped this last week. There's one more video coming in the series. It's a six part series. Uh, but there's one little clip from episode five that I wanted to share with you guys here on YouTube. I wanted to share this clip for a couple of reasons. Um, the first one will become obvious the second it starts playing, but um, I also just wanted to kind of give you guys a little sneak peek of what's going on over there. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this series. Uh, it's got a whole different set. I had a set designer construct it for me. We've got better graphics, and as you might have noticed already, it's in 4K. So like, this is the best quality stuff that I've done as a content creator, and most of you aren't seeing it because it's on a different platform. Which is too bad because there's a lot of other creators that are putting some of their best work over there as well. Um, look, I, I know I'm biased, but it is a, a pretty great platform. But you know what? This isn't like a sponsored video. I'm not trying to put the cell on you or anything like that. Uh, I just wanted to share a little piece of this project that I'm really proud of. And, uh, and yeah, there's actually another project that's going to be coming after it. I've already kind of started working on it a little bit. Um, it's going to be a really big deal. I'm really excited about it. But anyway, enough of this. Here's a small clip from episode five. The title of it is... Uh, common diseases that science still can't cure. So, enjoy. Next up is type 1 diabetes. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to a guy named Albert Miller. Albert Miller is a guy who's been showing up in the comments of my YouTube channel for literal years, and in every single comment on every single video, he asks for a video on research into type 1 diabetes. It, it actually has become a whole thing on my channel now. Other commenters look for him and they comment on it. It's, it's, just, it's just a part of my channel. So Albert, this one's for you. I'm gonna talk about type one diabetes on Nebula. So in fairness to Albert, I can see why he requested it so much. There's a, there's a lot to unpack here. Type one diabetes affects over 42 million people worldwide. And you, you probably know there's type one and type two diabetes. Maybe you didn't know the difference. Well, here's the difference. Type two diabetes is when a person's body can't effectively use insulin, or you might call it insulin resistant. And this is usually just treated with diet, exercise, and medicine. Type 1 diabetes, though, is when the body just straight up can't produce insulin. And that's a whole other thing. So insulin is a hormone that regulates blood sugar, and without it, that blood sugar just kind of builds up in the body, and over time, this causes problems. And if this goes on long enough, it can actually lead to diabetic ketoacidosis, which could lead to coma or even death. And yeah, type 1 diabetes is another autoimmune disease. In this case, it attacks the pancreas, or specifically the beta cells that produce insulin. And this is not something that can be regulated with diet or exercise. People with type 1 diabetes have to have a, an insulin pump or take insulin injections for the rest of their lives. This is a lifelong commitment. Some of the telltale signs of undiagnosed type 1 diabetes include, but are not limited to, blurry vision, less energy, unquenchable thirst, frequent urination, and unexplained weight loss. So a cure to type 1 diabetes would have to do two things. First, stop killing all the beta cells that are producing insulin, and then replace the beta cells that have been lost. So on the immune system side, the beta cells are attacked by T cells, which are produced in the thymus gland. And the T cells come in three flavors, warriors, helpers, and regulators. Is it just me, or do the T cells sound like they're in a gang? Like the helper cells are the, the nice gang. They, they help the old ladies across the street, right? It's the helpful gang. But the helpers are not the good guys when it comes to type 1 diabetes. They're actually the ones, the helpers and the warriors, that go through and kill all the beta cells. The regulators just kind of stand by and watch. There is a promising new development from the Transplantation Immunology Lab at the Garvin Institute of Medical Research. There, a team led by Associate Professor Shane Gray used a vaccine called BCMA-FC to address the attack. The vaccine was given to mice that had a disease similar to type 1 diabetes. It was discovered that it increased the number of regulator T cells and reduced the number of warrior T cells. On the replacement front, one option that has been considered is, uh, well, replacing them. Yeah, they're working on replacing the destroyed beta cells with new ones. Sounds simple, but obviously it's a lot more complicated than that. Beta cells can figure themselves in clumps known as islets. And in some recent clinical trials, 17 people had pancreatic islets transplanted, and of those 17, seven completely stopped needing to take insulin. And of the remaining participants, many of them had to take less insulin than they did before, so that's good news, right? Of course, there are some drawbacks. The main issue with transplantation is that these islets have to come from more than one organ donor, which means there are fewer organs to go around for the people who need it. And as common with most transplants, the patients have to take powerful immunosuppressive drugs to make it take, which comes with a host of its own problems. And also, the islets are fragile, and they don't like being transplanted. 70% of them die within the first 36 hours. But you may be screaming into the void, what about stem cells? Couldn't we create new beta cells from stem cells? Well, there's research on that. Researchers at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis claimed that their technique could control blood sugar for up to nine months. At least, it did in the mice that they experimented on. 
The technique works by targeting a cell's cytoskeleton, its internal scaffolding, which gives the cell its shape, lets it interact with its environment, and allows it to multiply, divide, and move. Yeah, one of the problems when transplanting uh, human stem cells is that they can divide into other things as well. Uh, these aren't really harmful necessarily, but the more of them that divide into other cells that aren't the cells you're trying to make, then the more stem cells you need to start with, and that just makes it that much harder. So yeah, let's just say that you need a billion beta cells in order to cure type 1 diabetes, and a quarter of those wind up being something other than the beta cells from the stem cells that you started with. So then you need 1.25 billion, and that just, you know, makes it more difficult. So this new method uses the stem cell cytoskeletons to create more beta cells instead of the other stuff that you don't want, and it seems to be working. At least it worked well in mice, so that's the good news, but it needs to be tested in bigger animals before they can try it in humans. And they also have to find a way to automate this process, because they're going to have to make billions of these if they're going to cure type 1 diabetes. But for right now, anyway, type 1 diabetes remains unsolved. But chin up, Albert. There may be hope yet.